my mom was doing my hair, we were watching TV, and I don't remember what was on TV, but somehow the subject came up of, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a doctor. And she said, you know, she's like, you want to be a doctor? He's like, you're so little. How do you know you want to be a doctor? And I said, because I want to help people. And, you know, it's kind of odd what three-year-old knows they want to be a doctor, but I would consider it a higher calling because it's something that I've always been passionate about, and I just went after it. I realized when I was about four years old that I wanted to be a doctor and it was something that I pretty much knew I could do. It wasn't anything that I thought was unattainable. I said I wanted to be a doctor, just, I just said it and they supported it. And I started high school and I kept on saying it. And I kept on doing programs and it just, you know, it fell into place. I had been sewing since I can remember. My mother was a seamstress and she taught me to sew very well. So I knew I could stitch up a body better than some man who learned it last week and I decided I would be a surgeon. I can't think of anything else I would like. So by 12, I decided I wanted to become a doctor. I grew up in the era where you could either be a doctor, a lawyer, or anything else. <laughs> and my father was a physician. So doctor was always high on the list. Um, and cardiac surgery is really the most fun that you can have legally in the United States. I think I knew when I was a sophomore in college. I had never seen a doctor before I went to college. And you can't be what you can't see. Black women have a traditional history and responsibility for healing. Black women were the primary caregivers in many of the slave communities. I often go around and I speak to young people and I mentor a lot of people. And I like to mentor people and let them know. I try to be very open with my life. And I let them know that I grew up in the projects of a single family home. Oh, my, my mother raised us, um, five girls alone. Um, I got pregnant at 16. Um, I, you know, then had four more children before getting married. So I had five children when I got married. I was everything people say you're not supposed to be. You know, I'm every stereotype. I was not supposed to make it. Not many women took the challenge of going beyond straight general surgery into a subspecialty. And so when you look at subspecialties in surgery, there are very few women, and there are also very few African-American women, because that in itself is a challenge, you know, trying to get through the glass ceiling beyond those careers that are viewed as uh, male-dominated fields. And certainly subspecialties in, medicine, in surgery are male-dominated. Female doctors have a really important role to play in identifying problems and needs of communities of the communities that they come come from so they can play a very important role in terms of advocating um, for problems and concerns of their communities I was raised by some fierce black women and I learned from them and also from my father that number one the main thing you have to do is believe in yourself that you really have to believe that you can do it so I grew up on the little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. The young black female physicians that are emerging today can do anything they really want to do. Dr. Crystal Harrington. You are some of the smartest, most talented individuals going into anything in the world today. Dr. Antonia Francis. I want you to also think about as you become great and wonderful healers. Dr. Rochelle Patrice Yarborough. That that healing is not only for your patients, but it's for your community. It's for your nation. It's for the world. <laughs>